Kampf um Erinnerung bedeutet eigentlich, dass wir immer wieder darauf hinweisen, welche Verhältnisse, welche Konstellation in Europa, welche Bewegungen haben dazu geführt, dass der deutsche Faschismus gekommen ist, dass er in den Krieg eingetreten ist. Wer hat davon profitiert? Es ist ein Kampf um Erinnerung, es ist nicht ein einfaches Erinnern. So we need to be very much um, aware of the agenda behind this and, and, and the consequences behind this rewriting of history. Um, which is done politically. I mean, this is the fact that, you know, if the European Parliament votes something, this is not a matter of historical research. It's politicians um, with a political agenda uh, voting on what history should be. I like to utilize the quotation, the citation from a British historian who's now dead for a couple of decades, but he was very important in the 1970s and 1980s that Tim Mason, who wrote a lot about the Third Reich um, uh, and questions of the interwar time period, that he once used the term, historians should not hate, but they should hate precisely. And he was, of course, talking about the rise of fascism, both in Germany and in Italy. So the uh, importance of uh, being accurate and precise, I would like to stress. We should also clearly state that in many countries, France, Italy, but also Belgium, communist forces were in the first line of resistance against uh, fascism, against Nazism. Um, these things, they um, should be remembered. They are important. In first line, in which we actually the anti-fascist thinking and the offering um, of fascism, but that in a form do that dies nicht rückwärts gewandt ist und auch nicht in Ritualen erstarrt. Ich erinnere, wir gehen einmal im Jahr hier in Berlin in die Gedenkstätte der Sozialisten und Sozialistinnen und dort steht auf der zentralen Stele die Opfer mahnen uns. Und das meint eben, dass diese Aufforderung bis in die Gegenwart fort wird. Das ist nichts Abgeschlossenes, Historisches. Und wenn wir nicht dieses Erinnern, dieses Mahnen mit den aktuellen Kämpfen, mit den Kämpfen gegen ähm, die wachsende auch rechte und rechtsterroristische Gefahr in Europa verbinden, dann wird es eben zu einem erstarrten Ritual und das darf nicht passieren. Ich glaube, wir, wir haben eben oftmals zu sehr auf ähm, formale Fortwirkungen geschaut. Also wie viele Mitglieder in der CDU oder in der FDP waren in der NSDAP? Wie viele ähm, ehemalige Angehörige von ähm, Wehrmacht, SS, Gestapo haben, keine Ahnung, den Inlandsgeheimdienst aufgebaut oder die Polizei? Aber was führt dazu eigentlich, dass in den Familien, in der Gesellschaft ähm, so etwas wie ein konstanter Antisemitismus tradiert wird. Das kann ich nicht alleine damit beantworten, dass die alten Eliten nachgewirkt haben. Das ist weit mehr. Und ich glaube, dieses Thema muss man anpacken, wenn wir tatsächlich dahin kommen wollen, zu sagen, wir haben eine wirksame Entnazifizierung der, der Gesellschaft erreicht, die ähm, dann auch in der Lage ist, tatsächlich ähm, sich zu wehren. Um, so I think this is for us um, the main lesson, that if we do not speak in a way that uh, the working class um, relates to us, so hence that we do not express, if we do not express their concerns, their worries, and if we are not uh, the working class heroes, we as the left should be, then we will lose the battle. This for me is the very first, uh, the very first lesson. Um, of course, in a different situation, in a different uh, context with, with, with the far right that takes different forms and shapes, you know, all of this is true. Um, but if you want me to, to, to give one lesson, I really think that the centrality of the working class in defeating fascism I really want to draw attention to the importance of the year 1934 as a moment when finally the anti-fascist forces in Europe began to realize that something has to happen. And what happened very concretely is that anti-fascist forces um, of the left, working class organizations, but also some 
non-working class organizations like some left Catholics, etc., began to form what was called then United Fronts, uh, common alliances to combat fascism with the perspective to combat fascism, not only by demonstrating in the streets against fascist uh, marches, etc., but by trying to go beyond what was beyond the social model that was then uh, common in, in Europe, where, wherever parliamentary democracy still existed, and to go forward in the direction of a perspective towards socialism. It goes something like, whoever is not prepared to talk about socialism should also remain silent about fascism. So the United Fronts took this kind of sentence, this, this, this uh, slogan seriously, and attempted to move forward into a new societal model and thereby combat fascism. Now, uh, this is probably the most important lesson that was uh, learned after the rise of fascism in Germany. And um, well, I want to leave it at this for now. <laughs> um, but hence, this requires this requires a, a dialogue, a presence on the on the on the ground. You know, it's not just something we can do from uh, ivory towers, theoretical towers, um, where we kind of, you know, have all the wisdom and speak in very academic uh, speech. It doesn't work this way. It works through ground struggle, through um, presence with the working classes, with other classes, and struggling together hand in hand, arm in arm.